Okay, hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Jose, James, Nick, you are here. Very well done. Shaket, hi. Shmuel, hi. Every nice, nice, nice. James Blackmore, happy Father's Day to you too. Yes, it's a beautiful day here in Cape Town, in heaven. Really nice and uh, shiny, although it's uh, winter. Tracy, hello, hello, hi. So let's see who, where we have lots of people from all over. Margaret, hello, hello, hello. Great to see you. And we have uh, Candice uh, doing all the admin in the background and JJ full of uh, paint. Hi, JJ. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. And Lizette, you are here. I'm so happy you made it. Good. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, good. So today there is no recap. That's the good news. There's no recap today. Yes. Hi, Anita. Okay. Are you ready to start? Are you ready to start? Yes, 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 yes. Anastasia, hi. Good. Okay. Here we go. Very quickly, the agreements. Very quickly, the agreements. Number one, number one, uh, no recording, please. Okay, no recording. Uh, uh, you can take pictures. Number two, nothing I say today is true unless, of course, it is true for you. Okay, so nothing I say today is true unless it is true for you. Nothing I teach you is new. You already know it. What I teach you is not just theory, it is proven facts, but they need to be implemented in an exact manner and are different to what you are used to. And hence, it is the ability to confront the drills, not just the listening, that will produce the expected results. And you need your acknowledgement, and the most important things is have fun. And let's start. Life versus potential. It is nothingness that can bring about somethingness it is the only real power does it make sense to you you really have to look at that and see does it really make sense to you do you really understand the concept of nothingness that bring about somethingness love it yes escape good yes amazing curtis i agree Shmuel, yes. So it is nothingness that bring about something yet, somethingness. Yet all day long, you think you deal with somethingness. But what you deal with is actually a nothingness, an illusion. Do you understand that the physical universe is an illusion? Happy Father's Day. Thank you, Kate. Do you understand that... Um, that what we're dealing with is an illusion yes okay good so why is it an illusion why what we deal with is an illusion why is it an illusion how do you prove that it's an illusion why because we made it up okay we put it there yes but how do you prove it? How do you prove it? How do you actually show that the physical universe, it is an illusion? It's something that was created from nothing, created in our own mind, because anyone can create whatever one wants. I don't know, every good. Very good. Proof, I'm talking about proof, not just feeling or statements or understanding, proof. How do you prove that the physical universe is an illusion? Okay, let's have a look, okay? Let's have a look. If this is you, oops, that's not you, definitely. Uh, if this is you, okay? And you, of course, have eyes, yes? And other senses, okay? And you look at something, you've got something here, okay? And you look at that something. 
What is the process of you seeing that thing? What is the process of you seeing that thing? Can you hear me? It already exists in your observation. It's looking, not observing. You put it there and then you see it. And the spirit sees, yes. I put it there. Okay. Brain are a bit slow today. <laughs> okay. I like a uh, light hits object, then our eyes see it, and then okay. Good. So let, let me let me show you what happens. Okay. Usually, most of the people think that the process of seeing is something like that. You've got a source of light, okay, that hit the object, and the light get reflected to your eyes and from your eyes, hopefully to the brain and then to your mind and the spirit look at the mind okay that's what most people think do you agree with that good excellent good perfect now do you agree that any object in the physical universe change at the rate of the speed of light. Do you agree that any object in the physical universe change in the rate of the speed of light? Yes? Good. Excellent. Good. Now, how long it takes from a, a piece of light, a photon, to go from here to your eyes, to your mind, to you? What do you think is the, the speed, more or less? It's actually, you get register, you get register at somewhere around a quarter of a second. Okay? It's a quarter of a second. Okay? By the way, I don't know if you know, but dinosaurs, they used to have two brains, one in the head and one in the tail. They had two brains, one in the head and one in the tail, because they were so long that this, the communication was just too long to arrive. So they needed two brains. It's, it's a fact, it's not a joke. Serious. So, yeah, because it takes time to move from the eyes, from the sensory, through the brain, through the mind, through you. It takes about a quarter of a second, sometimes a bit longer, depends what sensing, like if you touch with your fingers or your toes, or, or, or your eyes, there's different uh, reaction times. That's, that's why there is a reaction time. That's why the reaction time is not instant. So far, so good? Good. So let's call it, let's, let's agree that it's more or less, more or less quarter of a second for an average person, okay? How many times an object change in a quarter of a second? a lot it's quarter it's a quarter of a second it means that if an object change every second 330,000 uh, times per second okay so the speed of light gazillion times yes so it's quarter divided to that it's few hundred thousand times let's say a hundred thousand times okay so do you agree that from the moment this photon here hit the object, let's call it a zero time, until it arrived to you. What you see is not what is there. Good. So you're looking at an illusion. You never look at what it, what's there. Do you understand that? Yes, wow. Yes, because it's changing all the time. Okay, now it gets even more. So everyone agree with that? Everyone agree with this uh, idea? Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Interesting, yes. Okay, 
Good. Now, uh, so, so what you get here is some, you're dealing always with something that is not there. What's the ramification of that is that as long as you try to, to handle the physical universe, you will fail. Why? Because you deal with the past. Every time you touch the physical universe, you deal with the past, you'll become more insane. The physical universe job is to make you more insane. And as you will go along, your reaction time becomes slower. An old person, some, the average person of 50, reaction time is about half a second. At the at age of 60, is about more or less a five eighths. And at about 70, you get to a reaction time if you're in good condition of one second, which means the physical universe gets you to deteriorate because it gives you always a loss. So you become slower. So the more you will try to handle the physical universe, the more you will fail. What do I mean to handle the physical universe? The more the physical universe is senior to you, the more you don't know that ideas are senior to facts. Make sense or not? Good. Good, 100%. Good. It explains a lot, yes. Now, your, in, your instinct is to be right. So because you are want, wanting to be right, you're trying again, and you're trying again, and you're trying again to understand the physical universe. You try to duplicate, you try to duplicate, you try to duplicate, and you lose, and you lose, and you lose. The, um, the insane insistence on being right is actually a manifestation of trying to make the physical universe obey. Idea is something that some it's a something that gets created from nothing. Okay, so far so good. It is unbelievable, yes. So I want to cover to run with you. I want to run with you uh, what we're going to get out of the uh, whole seminar. Okay, so this this is the, what we're going to get. So the first thing. The first purpose of the From Zero to Hero webinar is to teach you how to restore the ability, which you never lost, to be the potential and postulate energy rather than use energy. Number two, the next thing we will do in the From Zero to Hero webinar is drill you on tuning in and controlling your environment without the use of energy. The next thing we will do in the From Zero to Hero webinar is to learn how to observe not by looking. Learn how to observe not by looking. What do I mean is, this is looking, light hits you, goes to your eyes, and you are the effect. Observing is the opposite. You put something there and it becomes real, not only to you, but for everyone. The next thing we will do in the From Zero to Hero Panar is to introduce you to you. You will find who is you when we're saying you, the spirit, nothingness, blah, blah, blah. Wonderful. But if I will ask you who is you, you will see that you will have a problem. Because you know that you are not something. So who is you? You will actually have a problem answering this question. And that's why people look at uh, what is my purpose? Who am I? What am I doing here? Blah, blah, blah. All of that is around that specific question. The next thing we will do in the From Zero to Hero Pioneer is restore your ability to separate yourself from the effects you create. And by that, gain control over the effect you create. Most people lost in their life, and from the moment they lost something, they try to be right. This is a process of losing, not having what you want. You see it, but it's never there. Every time you hit something and it comes to you and you don't actually have it, you lost. And most people lost, lost businesses, lost friends, lost, uh, 
lost relationship, lost uh, health, lost many things, and they cannot separate themselves, them, from the loss, so they cannot recover from the loss. Because they think they are the loss. So for as long as you are the loss, you will continue to lose. Quite amazing. All of that, part of that seminar. Let's continue. What is the definition of success? What is the def It is fabulous. Yes, Margaret. What is the definition of the word success? What is the definition of the word success? Sum of all validated improvement. Yes, sum of all validated improvement, your approval. Yeah, validated improvement. Very, very true. So the definition of the word success is the sum of all validated improvements. Okay? All validated improvements. Okay? What are improvements? What is an improvement? What is an improvement? Progress, increase in amiability and, and barriers overcome, overcoming barriers, something that is better than before, overcoming of barriers. All of this thing is true. All of this thing is true. Doing something better than before. Perfect. So improvements are the rehabilitation steps needed in the physical universe towards using your potential. So what happened is like that. What happened like that? You've been for a long, long, long time. You've been cheated by the physical universe. And things happen and you try to understand them and you try to understand them and you try to understand them. And what you do, you build the past. The more you try to understand, the more you build the past. Why? Because when you try to understand and you cannot, you leave it as an open cycle. You leave it as an open cycle. You leave it as an open cycle. So anything you look at around you is an open cycle. So continuously you're opening cycles. Do you, do you get it? Do you understand? Yeah. So you've got open cycles. You've, yes, yes, you're seeking validation. And that's why validation is the, the actual most closing cycles of action. Giving a proper acknowledgement is the most um, therapeutic thing in the universe. Exactly. You cannot get closure. Exactly. Because throughout your life, you leaving things open and they become worse because they are all connected. Even if you don't see the connection, they are all connected. What one because in the physical universe, there is nothing that didn't have a prior cause. Do you agree with that? Everything has a prior cause. Something caused what happened the next second. In the physical universe, something caused what's happening the next second, which means that everything is connected, even if you don't know that it's connected. So what you have in the physical universe is a continuous method of opening cycles of actions. Now, when you open cycles of actions, you lose control. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? Yes. Huge. Yes, it is. Bam. Yes, exactly. So when, when you're opening many cycles, when you're not in control, you won't have income because control equals income. Controls equal income. Okay, controls equal income. So if you open many cycles, you mean you don't have control. Yes, you don't have as, as much control. You open cycles, you lose control, so you lose income. So the only way for you not to lose income is basically disagree with the physical universe or more correctly, eliminate the physical universe. Stop giving validation to everything that's happening. So what does it mean? When you are actually improving, when you improve, 
you actually close the cycle of action. When you improve, the only way for you to improve is when you control the physical universe rather than the physical universe controls you. The only improvements in the universe is that when you realize that you control the physical universe rather than the physical universe controlled you. Example, um, the physical universe says that you will not make it today to the airport at time. It's just there's not enough time. And you decide, I will, and you make it on time. The physical universe says there's never parking here. And you say, yeah, there is a parking here. It's going to happen. The physical universe says, she told me she's not going to buy from me. It's very physical. I decide she will, and she is. I speed faster than, yes. So you decide everything, yes. You say, well, there's no money. And you go and you do something, although you have the money, and the money will come. But what usually you do, you start to go against it. The physical universe use all its power to push against you. And you say, well, I was wrong. The moment that you said that you were wrong, you will continue to be wrong. Because every failure you had is because you didn't push as much. You just didn't push just a little bit more push. You didn't have enough oomph. You didn't have just another hour, another day, another week, another 10 hours per day to push. Another, just wake up two hours earlier. Just go to the gym. This is really, really fascinating. The whole secret of success is to realize that improvement is something where you beat the physical universe you show the physical universe who is the boss and it's you and you do that by just pushing a little bit more and at one point you go past the wall you know when you run you have, there's a wall you know that you go past the wall this is when you become you you senior to the body, you senior to your bank account, you senior to everything. You just somehow push more. You do the actions. Doing the action means controlling the physical universe, not just moving things around. By the way, do you? Does everyone knows that we have a chat box? We have about forty-four people on the call. I don't see everyone on the chat box. Everyone knows we have chat box. Yes, just tell me that you have. Yes, 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 yes. Chat box, chat box, can know me, Yofi. Chat box, yes, I'm listening, David, good. Yes, very good, very good, excellent. Okay, good, so you know that we have a chat box, you found it. Excellent, it's not the questions, the chat box. The question can be used by people that are on the cell phone, but I'm not monitoring the questions. I'm monitoring only the chat box, okay? So you need to make sure that you are on a, a laptop or a computer, so I will actually see what you're saying, okay? Good. So what I'm showing you at the moment is something really fascinating, uh, and you will see that your improvement has to do with you not accepting anything as failure. You push forward until it's done. You push it. And it's not important if it's big or small. So it is the number, the number of validations, not the quality of validations, that will make you successful. OK? Number of validations, not the quality of validation. And all day long, the physical universe tells you how you are going to lose, how you are a failure, how you are useless. Uh, and you will see that people get uh, depressed when they look at the physical universe uh, as the boss. And people get able when, this, when they look at the ideas as the boss. And they know that the physical universe has no power on you because the only thing that the physical can, universe can do is, ta is take your body. You get a new one, new model, nothing happened. 
Do you understand that? Okay, good. Excellent. Now, what is energy? What is energy? What is energy? Inflow, yes. Consideration, yes. True. What is energy? Particles in motion, yes. Lost potential, very good, Aaron. Yes. Inflow from the physical universe, okay. Something release when using potential. Very good, Chaked, excellent. Okay, if this is potential, it does, do you agree that this is a potential? Potential is stored, unused energy. That's all potential means, stored, unused energy. When you have a full gas tank of gas, it is a potential, it's not energy. As you use your potential, what you actually do, you release energy. So energy is the manifestation of used potential. So far, so good? Good, excellent, perfect. So energy, energy is what you see when you stop using your potential, it is a via. When you stop using your potential, when this thing, you don't use that, this thing as a potential, when you start a, losing it when you start when it start to go down when your potential start to go down you say i cannot it's too much for me da, 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 i'm useless at that moment you see energy via something that doesn't go direct potential is you sitting here you don't use energy and you bring something about without the use of energy so from nothing to something, because potential is nothing, you understand? There's no use of energy, there's no release of energy, this is nothing. Uh, this is a equivalent to this point here, before time. It is a potential. Once you use the potential, once you start to release your potential, to lose potential, not, not use, lose potential, what you see in the physical universe is energy. So every time you say, well, I will do it later, we waste our energy. Our yes, you, you basically use your, en you use your potential and lose energy. Every time you try to save energy, every time you try to save energy, what you're actually saying is, I don't want to use as much of my potential. I have a limitation on my potential. Every time you need to be careful or to save, what you do, you stop. The trick of this universe is when you need, what, what do you need to save or what do you need to be careful with? Only things that are weak. Yes, like saving money, yes. Only things that, you, that are weak, you save, yes? So when you say, look, look, uh, I need to be careful with my hands, they are weak. Basically what you say, good, they are weak. So what do I do? I need now to put all my attention on the hands because I need to protect them. And when I put my attention on the hands, I stop creating. I need to put my attention on money. I must be very careful with what I'm spending. Well, okay, no problem. No problem, you will not have money. I'm not saying that you need to be to waste money, but I'm, I'm saying that you need to use your money not to save it. You need to use it, and you need to use it in such a way that it will bring creation, not changing, because most of the people use the money to change. They buy food, they rent, they use the money to change. They buy useless things that will actually not give them anything. But if you take your money and invest it in a smart way, or if you take your money and buy something that really help you, really, really help you, 
for me, education. I invested the most amount of money in my life on education, although I never went for one second to, to school. Yes, or not for one second, since the age of 30. But I invested more money on education than anything else. Very amazing, yes? So uh, when you use your money correctly, you don't have attention on it. But when you go, let's say you say, okay, fine, I'll buy a seminar. And then you keep on saying, yeah, is it right, is it wrong, is it right, is it wrong? You will not get anything. You've done it, end of story, done, finished, next. They say in South Africa, they have a word that they say, dan kla. It's a nice word to mean like, that's it. Is that correct, Candice? <laughs> yes, good. So energy is what you see when you stop using your potential. When you, you don't use your potential, when you lose your potential, you see energy. Energy is measurable in the physical universe and potential is not. So the more you agree with the physical universe, the less potential you will have. Ah, I like that, the prompt. So the more you use energy, the less you, you have potential. The more you believe the physical universe is the boss, the more you move things by force, not by admiration, the more you get upset, uh, the more you get worried, the more you are almost irresponsible. It's very similar to, respons to irresponsible, but it's really responsible. So it is kind of, I don't care, but not because I don't care what will happen. I don't care because I know I can create it. You see the difference? It's, it's a very similar manifestation of irresponsibility but it is, I don't care because I can create it. Not because I don't mind what will happen. I don't care because I don't mind what will happen is irresponsibility. But I don't care because I know I can create it. It's something amazing. And you will see that in your, when you were young, you had this attitude of, ah, it's all going to be fine and everything become fine. The moment that you started to worry, things started to go wrong. So all you need is to force yourself, to force yourself to say everything will be right. I'll do what's right, not what I think is correct by the physical universe. I'll do what's right is, okay, fine, I want to buy that, I'll buy it. How? Just buy it, I'll figure it out. And where do I get the money from? From God. Who is God? Me. <laughs> I'll create it. Do you understand the idea? It's a totally different way of life. It's a totally different way of looking at life. Yeah. Yes, Jose, yes. It's just you, you, just ideas, 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 ideas. Now look, anything that ever happened to you and we, you managed to fix it because you did not agree with it. You came up with ideas. And the moment that you agreed, you stop coming up with ideas and you said there's nothing to do. Yes, and so adventurous while being young and never feel the other is, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, exactly. And that's what you need to restore. If it is to be, it will be up to me. Exactly. It's all up to me. Now, it is the ability to be without prior cause and without confirmation. It is the ability to be without prior cause and without confirmation. If you need a reason why, then you lost it. If you look, if you say, I'm going to have a uh, parking and you look, do I have parking? Let's check if I have parking. You lost it, you won't not have parking. If you say I can and then you go and check, did I get the deal? You will not have the deal. It has to be like, it's not a problem. I'm just creating, creating, creating. And oh, by the way, I got money. Fine. What, what, that, what, that's a nice surprise. Good. Like you could never know that it's coming. It's have to be like, I'm, I'm just doing it for the fun and it's happening. Like when you were young, you're doing it for the fun and somehow it worked. 
you didn't think about, well, I don't have money. You just went ahead and somehow the money came and somehow you find the place to stay. And somehow, somehow something happened, not because you planned it for every second. I always uh, have parking. My uh, brother is always amazed about uh, me getting a parking right outside the door. Of course. Now, what happens when you use energy? What happens when you use energy? Margaret, good. Well done for Tom. No, the fact that you got a parking spot is not a spot is not a confirmation. Confirmation is if you check before, but if you go and you just know that it's there, like you don't need a confirmation that you have a hand, but it's there. You just know. You become powerful. You what happens when you use energy? You become powerful. Okay, you lose it. Get tired, lose time, yes, lose your potential, lose life, you lose potential, you prove to yourself you can create more. I remember being 25, brought my first home and did not even know how to make uh, the monthly payment and I did it. Of course, you become effect, declining potential. Why do I decide that I will have parking and there is no parking? Why? Because you check, you put a question mark. There is some kind of a question mark. Otherwise, it will always be there. So what happens when you use energy? It deteriorates. And you believe that you too deteriorate. This is the most important sentence in the universe. Look, look what's happened. Look, this is your body, okay? Beautiful body, very thin, muscular, slim, yes, amazing muscles. Sexy, of course, have to be sexy. Yes, tall, unproportional. <laughs> yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is your body, okay? Now, this is you, okay? You have no weight, no you are not weight, you are not, you are not heavy, you are not thin, you are not strong, you are not weak, you're just a potential. So you is the potential, okay? Okay, you're the potential. Now, you have two options. You either God for the body, you either use the body, or you serve the body. Most people serve the body, serve the physical universe, serve other people. They serve, they're always, always at the mercy of the physical universe, is the mercy of the body. The, the, and they will tell you, oh, I just want to be healthy. I just want to be healthy. I just want to be healthy. Most important thing is health. Most important thing is health bullshit. You are most important thing. If I need to protect my body all the time, the body is the God. And what happened? Because people believe the body is so important. When something happened to the body, they feel that it happened to them because the body is them. So if the body become old, they feel old. They lost the potential. Uh, if the body get hurt, they feel they are hurt. Uh, if they lost money, they feel they lost some of themselves. They lose, the, all of a sudden they feel a failure. They feel that they are useless. They feel all kind of thing. Uh, if someone scratched their car, they feel that themselves got scratched. You understand? So when you use the energy, you see, yes. The, the, the key here to understand is that, that your energy, that energy deteriorate. Energy deteriorate, you have to understand, energy deteriorate, it does not stay. Energy deteriorate, it's something that you lose. It's a manifestation of losing potential. And if you believe that you are physical, you deteriorate too. How many of you, how many of you 
In other words, energy is not life. Energy is the big trick. Energy is the big trick. Energy is just something that manifests in the physical universe and you are life. How many of you, how many of you instinctively, when people ask you at the beginning or before you met me, uh, who are you? You say, me, it's me. And you showed your body and you show me is mayor, uh, me, it's me, the body. Uh, I'm, the, I, I'm the body and the brain. Uh, and you say, it meets me. Ha, 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 yes, is that true for you? Before you met me, yes? Yes. So what basically you said, yes, it got me to think, good. So basically, <laughs> I'm my wallet, yes, yes. So basically, basically what happened, you say, I'm energy. You, you really believed for a long time that you are this body. So when you get old, you are old. You, you don't say my body is old. You say, I'm old. When, uh, when uh, the body don't have money, you say, I'm poor. When your body lost a, a business, you say, I lost the business. It's not you. You cannot lose. But you insanely associate yourself with the physical universe all day long. So when something happened to the physical universe, this dead thing that called the physical universe that don't even exist, we just saw it does not exist. When something happened to it, you say it happened to you. Uh, I was dying to myself because my name was given to me and everything to, uh, to me because it came from parent and surroundings. You got me to ask uh, myself, who am I? And hey, I can be whoever I Yes, it's crazy. Exactly. You've always known that friend is good. That's true, Lorna. Yes. Wow, amazing, Anastasia. Yes. Every so the body lost money, business, etc. Yes, because you cannot lose. How can something, how can, how can nothing lose something? Do, do you agree that, if, that, do you agree that you are a nothing? Do you, do you agree that you are a nothingness? Nick, I'll answer that. Do you agree that you are a nothingness, not a somethingness? Do you agree with that? Yes, everyone have no doubt about it, yes? Yes, good. So I want you, I want you to look at this question. Good. So I want you to ask this. I want you to ask you this question: How a nothingness can lose a somethingness? Just, just answer that question. Think about it. How a nothingness can lose a somethingness? It's insane. Exactly, they can't. No way. It's not even possible. Yes. It's impossible. Yes. You have been brainwashed by the physical universe. That's very true. Now, if you understand that the nothingness cannot lose a somethingness, you will see that you will never get worried, afraid, um, I don't know, uh, upset, uh, anything, anything. Because you have nothing to lose. Why you have nothing to lose? Because you are the creator of, every, of everything. Do you, do you see that? It's so fascinating. You cannot get sick unless you decide you want to be sick. The reason you get sick, you, you don't get sick. The body gets sick. The reason the get, body gets sick because you want a new model. It's like every one, two years, I need a new car. It, will, it has a nice smell, a new car. Like baby has a nice smell. Old people don't smell so good. Do you understand? It's like exactly like a new car. New car is dramatization on, on a new body. But if this is your only car and you hold it and it's 25 years old or 30 years old and you consider that you don't have money and you consider that you don't have, that you have only that car and you consider that you cannot make a new car and you consider that to have a new car you need to work very hard and you consider all this consideration, then you become the car. And when the car breaks, your heart breaks too. Yes. Yes, every, that's everyone. 
So this is really different. What, what I'm telling you is, and it's not not normal to for most people, but your, this group is not normal, so it's good. You are nothing. You bring about something. You bring about many somethingnesses. And the only crime that you can do is to become the effect of your own creation. Thank you, Lona. The only crime you can do is to become the effect of your own creation. You created that and you worry about it. It's like you paint. Imagine, imagine a person that paint or a person that play guitar and play chord on the guitar and then he become worried about the sound that comes out. And he said, wow, what's the sound? I'm, I'm afraid. What, what, what would you think about this person? It would be crazy, yes? Insane. That's what happened with most people most of the time. If I have, if the body pain, if I, my body has a pain, I say it's only pain. It's the body, it's not me. Can I become the effect? Yes, then you become a causative effect. Causative effect is a major, unbelievable concept. And, and I, I'll give you an example about causative effect that I just uh, notice in, in the gym. So anyone going to the gym, anyone doing gym? No, good. Yes, no, yes, 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 Sam. Okay, good. I want it's just for those people that go to the gym, but you can do that in many other areas. You know, in the gym, you have uh, for every action that you do, let's say that you do bicep curls, okay? Uh, so you do bicep curls. So you've got the action that you take the muscle and make it shorter, yes? So this is causative. Is that correct? And then the weight, because of the um, gravity, pulls you down. And what you do, you resist. Is that correct so far? And if you resist, it's good. And if you don't resist, the muscles don't really work, yes? Now, now, I want to tell you something amazing that you need to try. I want you to try even if you don't do gym. If you take a weight, and take it in up, like do the crawl, yes? Shorten the muscle and then causatively release it. Not, don't let, don't resist the gravity which make you an effect and don't let me it fall which makes you an effect, but causative, causatively push it down slowly. Causatively push it down slowly. You will really understand what does it mean to control the physical universe? This is really unbelievable. It's just something that just happened in the gym the other day. And it is like, wow. Cause it, if you, if you get it for a, a split of a second, just causatively let the hand go down or not let the hand, push the hand down causatively while you have the gravity with the, because you're causatively creating it, the gravity has no part in it. Okay, I'll give you an, another example, okay? I'll give you another example. Uh, let, let's look at cells, okay? Let's look at cells. Let's do an example with cells, okay? So you've got you, the salesman, and you've got the prospect. Okay, and you you talk to the prospect, and he you you're in the cell cycle, you're in the cell cycle, and things going well, blah blah blah. And Nomi, thank you. Yes, I did. I didn't know that. that. What Nomi says in Hebrew is that I just explained the whole principle of of yoga. Okay, now, so I'm talking in a cell cycle to a person, yes? Talking to a cell cycle uh, to a person, and then the guy says, you know, I'm not going to buy from you, okay? He says, I'm not going to buy from you. He was all the way, yes, he's going to buy, everything is good, everything is good, but you told him the price and he said, oh, that's too expensive. Did it happen to you before?
Yes, good. Now, if at that moment, if at that moment, if at that specific moment, what you will do, you will cause that thing that he says, you take that thing that he says, and in your mind only, just in your mind, just you, just you, you will decide that you saying it. He says that, but in your mind, because he says that it's a consideration, yes, it's not really him, yes? Because what you hear is not what he says, what you hear is what you think you hear, yes? So if you just, in your mind, say what he's saying positively, you will see that just by that, just by that, you will admire it so much that for him it will disappear and he will change your mind. Yes, exactly, John. Very big responsibility. Yes, exactly, Oscar. Yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You need to, to understand that the only reason, the only reason you are not where you should be is because you've been too nice with the physical universe. You've been too nice with agreements. You agreed once to not to not to know, and since then you don't want to break your word. You are just too amazing. It's not that you are weak. It's not that you are stupid. It's not. It's just that you are so ethical, so amazing as a being that you gave your word once for whatever reason. You, you said for one time, you said, okay, fine, physical universe, fine, okay, great. I, I, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You won, just one time. And from that moment on, that's it, you have an agreement. And the physical universe will push you and push you. It's like uh, when you start to lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose, you lose. Did it happen to you that you start to lose, it, that some problem happened and it start to come uh, like in draws? It's, it's like an avalanche of problems. It's not one problem. It's never one problem. You find one problem, there's 5,000 problems. Yes, you just keep on losing, exactly, yes? All, yes, yes, a snowball. So all you have to do is to look at what's happening at the bad thing that happened and to say, okay, good, I'm doing it. I'm positively doing it. This is really fascinating. The door upset you are with him completely and the upset goes away, exactly. Yes, yes. Kapil, you will you will listen in there. You you will just go again to the recording. You will get it, okay? It's amazing. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. You need to take the motion. Look look what's happened usually. Look, and I'll give it to you in a different way on sales, okay? What happened usually? You say bye. You say bye, and the prospect says no. What do you do? In your mind, even if you don't say it aloud, you say, this asshole, he promised, he cannot see, he's stupid, what did I do wrong? I've done, I've invested with him so much time, I've done so much for him, and he's saying no. Is that correct? In one way or another, you said that, yes? Yeah. Yeah, good. Now, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? How do you do it technically? How do you do it on a, a how do you reverse that flow? How do you make sure that this, this is the prospect? And this is you. You want the prospect to push in the same direction as you. What you do, what you do is like that. Number one, you agree with him. He says that he's expensive. You say, okay, I agree, I understand. This is number one, okay? Number two, what you do, 
you accentuate it, what, you make it bigger. If he says it's expensive, you tell him it's actually it's really, really expensive. It's the most expensive, most unreasonable, most expensive. It's impossible. Number three, what you do, you do nothing. Number four, what you do, you give him back the reason you found earlier why he want to buy. And number five, you try again and he will go with you. Do you understand? Thank you. Amazing. Oh, this is really unbelievable because what you do now, you become, you causatively, because you're doing all of that thing. You, you took what he says and you say, good, I know, no problem, I know. And he, he said that it's not a problem. It doesn't affect me at all. It doesn't affect me at all. So how do I know that it doesn't affect you at all? You don't have the jerk of resisting it. You don't have this jerk of, whoa, I want to resist it. Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you. This is, this is really fascinating. If you will master that, if you will master that, you have to be, the, the, only, the only mistake you can do is not finding beforehand not doing what I'm calling the diagnostic step properly, because what you give him here at four is something that he cannot refute. It's something that he agreed to and you closed him that he agreed to. It is not going with the flow, it's actually controlling the flow. It is actually controlling the flow. You are caused all the time. Going with the flow is actually resisting the flow. Yes, Lona, yeah. Yes. Okay, so all this, uh, what I'm saying is energy deteriorate. You lose your energy, energy deteriorate. You lose energy, not your energy. You lose energy and you believe that you deteriorate too. This, what happened here at that moment, you lost energy, energy has been lost. Force, counter force, what you have here, zero, nothing, nothing happened. Okay, you lose energy and you believe that you, the boss here, deteriorate too. What about life pattern? I don't understand the question, what about life pattern, Pam? This is not uh, only good for business, but I see that. Yes, all aspects of life, this is about everything. Our normal way of uh, resist, for yes, exactly, John, yes. Exactly. Exactly. Wonderful. Agree, Lorna. So you believe that because energy deteriorates, you deteriorate too. You believe because time passes, you become older. You believe. You believe that. Basically, basically, stop being nice to the physical universe. Be exceptionally nice to you. And you mean you and every other being, not things. It is amazing, I agree. Using energy leads towards no energy, always. Do you understand that if you lose, use energy, at the end, you will, the energy will end? Do you know about any source of endless energy in the physical universe? No, there's nothing. Everything is limited in the physical universe. So if you use energy, you heading towards no energy. So why will you use that? It's insane. It's a trap. When someone convinces you to use energy, this is using energy force counter force. Yes. If someone convinces you to use energy, run. What does it mean run? Not run by not confronting it. No, run away from that energy and become the one that control the energy. So I will ask you a question. I'm putting it there. 
I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. I'm yes, it's very big. Yes, 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 nothing. Did you agree to that? Boom, 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 boom. Now he's not using energy. He's flowing with you. There's no resistance at all. Nothing. It's only potential. Potential is some, it's the ability to release energy with no resistance at all. So the energy never get lost. So if we are at the point of using so much energy in, your, in our life and feeling tired, is creating a way to restore energy. Yes, to become you again, to move into ideas. When you use energy, you quit, you quit using your potential. You quit using you and start using the physical universe for confirmation. When you look at the physical universe, it is because you don't use potential. So energy come only from physical things. So you look at the physical universe, you say, okay, how much money I have, this is what I can do. How much money um, uh, can I make this week? Well, I've done $2,000 last week. So this week I can make uh, 2,100, maybe if I'll work very hard, so I cannot spend it. Uh, 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 uh. What you do, you say, this is what I need. And this is what I will get. And you don't even ask how. And you go out and you just do it. You just do it. You just start. You start doing. It's not important if you do one cent or two second cent because you don't check. You start doing. But you want to do $2,000 per week. You divide it by seven. And you say, it means that I need to do so much per day. And it's already half a day and I didn't do anything. And the one cent that I've done is nothing. So you don't even validate the one cent. So you do nothing. No, no. You just decide, this is what I want, and you spend it. You have no choice. You jump now. You first jump, and then you figure out where is the parachute. You first jump, and then you figure out where is the parachute. It is better to die. It is better to lose a body than to not move than to be a slave to a body. Your body is not as important as you. And when you make your body more important than you, you lose for a long, 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 long time. You lose and lose and lose and lose and lose. So you need to start, you, you really need to understand that you are the boss. And just start, start. How do you start? By first of all, first of all, first of all, the first step is validate your improvements. Any small improvement, any small improvement, any small improvement. Just count the improvement, any small improvement. And we, we I explained earlier today what is an improvement and how do you know how to count it and how many what is, how does it work, yes? Example of valid improvements? Oh, you've started, you spend the $5,000 that you don't have, and you say, good, I'm going to make them in the next three weeks, and today you made two cents. Good, I've made two cents. It's an improvement. Thank you. Another improvement today is I, the whole day I worked. I'm just, I didn't uh, surrender to the physical universe. I didn't find, I didn't do what the body said. I did what I want. I told the body when to go to sleep. The body did not tell me. Improvement. Another improvement is I was actually just creating the whole day. A another improvement is I can talk. I talked. Whew, that's an improvement. Usually I don't talk so much. So you just look. You look and look and look get it yes got it control you just you it's you the boss you're the boss you're the boss you're the boss what do you count you can't how do you know what to count anything that you created if i move the hand and i didn't create it i'm not counting it if you move the hands and yeah and you didn't do it i'm not counting you have to intend for it to happen and then it happened it's not happening automatically 
So you intend to make things. You put your intention and it happens, not the opposite. And you become more and more aware how you doing it and you, you make it a big, 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 big rule. The biggest rule of your life. The biggest rule of your life is if someone, if I find myself saying that something happened because someone or something else, I shoot myself. It's the biggest insult in the universe. Nothing happened because of someone or something else. It's all happened because of me. Exactly, Oscar, yes. Yeah. The big, the big law for you is you, everything that happened to you, it's you. And if it's you, of course you can change it. If it's you, of course you can change it. If it's you, you can change it. If it's them, if my wife pisses me off, how can I piss me on? <laughs> how can I change it? Yes, no, it sounds easy and it is easy. What's difficult is to be a lifetime of miserableness. Look, you can have a situation, you can have a situation when you're sitting here, okay, and there's another person sitting here and he punched you. And you have a bruise to prove that he punched you. Okay, good, wonderful. Now you can do two things. You can either say, he punched me, his fault, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him, and put all your life at making him wrong. So you making him wrong. He did something, you did, uh, he did something and you push against him. Yes? Or you can say, it's me, thank you. Can you punch me again? Don't knock him out, no. Because you're validating the force. Because I would knock him out if it was, if it was with, with no prior cause, if it was not him that prompted me for that. You get the idea, you get the difference. It is more important to be cause than anything else. Because every time you give up being cause, and this is the whole physical universe, punch is just a convincing you to be effect. A door that you need to open, it's convincing you to be an effect. Um, I don't know, going to the refrigerator to take milk, it's convincing you to be an effect. But if you do that causatively, if you decide, it's me, I'm doing it. Just decide. In a week, you will see that the physical universe all of a sudden disappear in front of your eyes and you put it there you will see that you're rolling a carpet, which is the physical universe in front of you. Should have been crying, carrying around this crap all of these years, making someone else in control. Now I can, because of her, and that release, the, and exactly. This, this is really, even if he did it, yes, if he did it, you causatively doing it in your mind, basically make you cause. It is like the example with the weight. You tell the physical universe what you want and not in control. Yeah. Yes. Margaret, I agree. And the physical universe will always make you effect wrong. This is all what the physical universe is trying to do. It makes you wrong. Okay, that's all the physical universe is trying to do. And hence, to be successful, you need to validate improvement. Physical things are composed of atoms, while spiritual things are composed of potentialities. You get that? Yes, good, Oscar. Physical things are composed of atoms, while spiritual things are composed of potentialities. So the moment, the moment that you stop seeing the potential in any situation, you stop being you. The moment you stop seeing the potential in any situation, you stop being you. And how do you know if it's you, if you see potential? If you don't see potential, if you don't see what's good in it, if you don't see that there's endless amount of energy that can come up 
from anything, it's not you. If you see a loss, it's not you. If you see pain, it's not you. If you see in impassibility, it's not you. Because you are composed of potential. Yes. What is the most fundamental difference between successful people and those who fail? That's the most basic, most fundamental difference. What's the one thing that is like, cover everything, all the actions? Uh, validate improvement, willingness, see good in, in potentials, never give up, persistence, they create success. Mm -hmm. They see people create, yes, using old idea, uh, using an idea probably, viewpoint on problems as uh, opportunity, yes, successful people use potential, exactly, Kapil, uh, exactly, exactly, exactly. Successful people are using their potential while failures are using energy. Wow, yes. Successful people using their potential while failure using energy. Failures will always tell you why it cannot be done, why it's difficult, why it happened, why, 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 why. They're using energy. Successful people always tell you, oh, of course, we can do that, 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 we can do that. They already forgot about what they could do because it has been done and they are already in the next game, they're already moving, they're already creating, they're moving, moving, moving all the time. Potential, endless amount of energy. And you, when you are next to a successful person, you see that there is some kind of an intensity in that person. That intensity is the endless source of energy, which is potential. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jose. Yeah. Successful people are using their potential while failures are using energy. Exactly, Kate. That's that's the whole thing. This so, do you know what the word spirit mean? It comes from Greek, and in Greek uh, they call the spirit the tita. Tita is um, is a number, but it's also mean an endless source of energy, endless source of energy. Every, yes, exactly every. And so successful people are those that create what could not be created. Anita, let me tell you something. Spirits don't die, bodies die. If you worry about the car that you lost, you will be like, if a person will sit and mourn for, about the car that he lost, it would be quite insane. The driver never got hurt, the car was lost. So the car was lost, we'll buy another one. We'll buy another two, we'll create more. The driver is never lost. The spirit is never lost. So the question is, why will you want to bring someone back when he wants to continue? Why will you want to hold for anything? The moment that you want to hold for anything, you will lose it. If I want to hold for something, believe me, I will lose it. Because when I say, I want, I want, I want, I, it have to be with me, it have to be with me, it will not be with me. You will get the opposite. They, they, they are with you only if you don't try for them to be with you. Because they have no location and you have no location. So they're not with you per se physically. Anita is on the chat, yes. If you, if you hold to something, if you hold on to something, if you actually um, say, uh, well, I need this body, I need this body, I need this body, I need this body, 
the body will become useless and you will lose it. Even if you have it, you, it will become useless. You will not be able to do much with it because you're limiting it. If you say, I want this car, I want this car, this is the only car, this is the only car, this is the only car, I want this lady, I want this lady, this is the only lady, the only lady, I don't want any other lady. If she, if she will go, I'm dead. I want anything that you say, in, like only, I want it, I want, you will lose it. But if you say, I create that lady, she will come to you and go from you whenever you want and do whatever you want without you even knowing that you want it. It's a joke, yes. But if I validate it and say how great it is, it manifests. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. The validate it. What is the it? There is no it. The spirit is not an it. It's not something. The spirit is not something. Really fascinating. Your house, my car. Okay, good. No problem. You can validate it. You can validate it. It's good. So successful people are those that create what could not be created. You're very welcome, Anita. Successful people are those who create what could not be created. So what you want to do, what you want to do is to find what you want to do is to find what you think cannot be created and that's what you're going for. You understand? What you, you need to find what you think cannot be created and that's and only that what you're going for because if it can be created, you actually going to lose and become even more into the, the thread because it's physical. The spirit gets me thinking because it can be touched or seen, yet touch as it is away from the physical body. Yep. Create the uninvented. Yes, I love that. So we become the creators. So you are the creator. All I'm doing is I'm getting you to look at the possibility that you can rehabilitate you and stop, stop the validation, the insane validation or the insane obedience to the physical universe that you created. Validate is not put attention on. Validate means to say it's there, to acknowledge its existence. Successful people simply consider they can as they assume a viewpoint based on their potential. They see possibilities. Successful people simply consider they can. They just consider that they can. As they assume a viewpoint based on their potential, not based on what's possible. They see possibility, they don't use possibilities. You don't say, well, it's possible because, but you assume it, you, you create a possibility. You are not limited by the, by the possibilities. Most people look at anything and say, well, that's impossible, that's possible. And what they actually say is, I see what the physical universe hand to me. And so I agree it's possible or not. That's incorrect. Even if you will succeed in some things, even if you will succeed in some things, you will still fail. So just like uh, Peter, yes, no, yeah, exactly, John. Successful people simply consider they can as they assume a viewpoint, they assume a viewpoint, they just make it based on their potential, not based on what possible. Yes, exactly, Oscar. So the next thing we will do in the From Zero to Hero webinar is to drill assuming any viewpoint. You need to drill assuming any, 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 any viewpoint, any viewpoint. It's a drill. It's something you need to learn. It's not something you're born with because for many, many life cycles, 
you've been actually handed a viewpoint by having a body and you believe the body was given to you. You don't even remember that you chose your parents. You don't even know why you chose your parents. Most people don't know why they chose their parents. They're not aware that they picked up a body. Body was not given to them. So you think a viewpoint was handed to you. And, and, and because of that, because of that, viewpoint could be handed to you. So this is really fascinating. People who fail simply consider they have limitations as they assume a viewpoint based on energy that does not belong to them. They assume a fake viewpoint. Look, this is really fascinating. People who fail simply consider they have limitation. So if you, if you, you failed, it's because you consider this limitation. You said, that's impossible. I already lost. He did that. He stole from me. Uh, she talked to me like that. Yes, that is big, Kate, you're true. She talked to me like that. The market is difficult. Uh, I don't know how. Um, any, any one of those things, yes? People who fail simply consider they have limitations. As they assume a viewpoint, why they consider they have limitation? Because they assume a viewpoint based on energy that does not belong to them. Someone gave them the body. It does not belong to them. The parents gave it to the, their body and someone gave it to the parents. So obviously it does not belong to them. This wall, I did not put it there. Someone put it there. So they assume a, view, a fake viewpoint. So basically they are always on a withhold. So the physical universe basically tell you, be on a withhold, hide, 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 cut your power, cut your power, cut your power, be on a withhold. Do you get that? A withhold, like you're withholding yourself, you're not using your full potential. You, you like, basically, when do you withhold? When, when a person withhold, yes? Yes, John, yes. When, when, when will a person withhold? When a person withhold, when, when will a person withhold? Why will a person withhold? Why will you not use your full potential? Why you will with, withhold? Fear, yes, fear. Doubt, yes, yes, not to hurt others, yes, exactly, Lizette. The only reason, it goes like that, look, this is you, and this is, and this is what you want, okay? Now, you do something that you consider is not okay. So what you do, you hide, you're withholding it. You don't want other people to see it, yes? You don't go to the newspaper and say, oh, I stole the million dollars. You, you just go and you hide it. Is that correct? Do you know that when you do something bad, you don't go to the newspaper, you don't go to Facebook and say, hey, guys, I just stole the million dollars, yes? Or I just killed someone or I just lied. Good. So you withhold, okay? Why you withhold? You withhold because you don't want someone else to see it. This is the reason, is that correct? Good. Now you withhold again and 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 again. So no one could see what you've done, yes? And it's true, no one can see. You're fully protected, but you don't see anything either. What don't you see? Possibilities. You don't see possibilities anymore. What you see is only barriers. I cannot do that because. 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 This is all barriers. When you have, I cannot do that because, that because is something you did in the past and you did not take responsibility for. Oscar, this is what I wrote you in the email that we're going to do. 
Yes. <laughs> Good candies. Nick, exactly. This is really, this is really, this is really the key here. You, you really have to understand this. This is where, and how does it start? You take a body that is not yours, but you say that it's yours. Someone gave you the body and you don't know it's yours. And it takes some time for you to say, okay, fine, that's my body. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Furious, that's my body, but that's my body. But somehow, somehow, somewhere, you know that you and the body is not the one, but you say I'm the body. You lie all the time. Every time you lie, it's a sin. Every time you sin, you put a withhold. The withhold is not so much that you stole $50 or you lied or that, that, that to someone, is that you lied to you. If there are 100,000 withholds for a person, five is for other people, and 990,000, whatever, is for against himself. Yes, Oscar. Most of the withholds are against yourself, not against other people. Most of your sins are against yourself, not against other people. Every time you say, he did that to me, you're committing a sin. You cut your power. And you'll see that people that are angry or afraid or uh, antagonistic or etc., they're never actually angry about the other person. They're angry about themselves. How do I know? Because the anger is never logical. Why it's not logical? Because they don't even see the other person. Although they sure they do. Sure, yes. Yes, no one can do anything to you. Yes, no me. Kate. Very true, Arjuna. This is really fascinating. You have to understand. This is un believable this is the most important thing to understand you actually lying to yourself about who you are every time you say i'm a body every time you say well i cannot do that you're lying to yourself you're adding more blocks and once you've added one more block you become that much less able that much less potential that much less you Okay, does it make sense to you? Do you see the mechanism? Yes. Good. This is big, yes. This is big, yes, 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 it's true, yes. Very true, but needs insight. Yeah. Wonderful, clear, yes, yes, wow. Now, guys, don't forget that we are on number six, I think, of this seminar, but this is an introduction to the actual thing. You, you understand? I'm just explaining to you what we're going to go through. <laughs> Although it's very powerful, this is just an introduction to what we're going to do. I'm just explaining to you what needs to, what we need to go through so you understand why you need it even. Yeah? How do we free ourselves from the... That, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. Yes. Now, why don't people use their full potential? Why people don't use full potential? In short, in short, criticism. Exactly, Oscar. People don't use their full potential because of criticism. Okay? Criticism is the problem. When you criticize someone, or you did it to me, be it, yes. You did it to me, or he's at fault, or, well, you know, any, anything that is the other side. Criticism, criticism, finding fault with someone. Okay, now what's the definition of criticize?
to make less of, to find fault, make wrong, yes, to make wrong, yes, mm -hmm. to put someone down for mistake, finding fault, to steal someone's potential, that's very good, to find fault, to remove someone's potential, invalidate, to make myself right, yes, not seeing another point of view, no, it's very good, to argue about who or what is not your your validation, yes. To push anchor point in, JJ. Not agree, disapproval, to make wrong. Now I want you to take everything that you say and tell me, can it be constructive criticism? Constructive invalidation, constructive make wrong, constructive, no, there's no such thing, yes? You understand? If you just take the words that you said, the make wrong, constructive make wrong, constructive find fault, anything like that, there is no such thing as constructive criticism. Criticism always, 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 always destroyed. Take your definitions and you will see that there is no such thing as constructive criticism. Constructive criticism has been invented by people that criticize and cannot stop themselves from criticize. And we will find why people criticize. The only reason people criticize, do you, know, do you know why people criticize? Let me show you, let me show you something fascinating. So after a person done, after a person done a lot, so this is person A and this is person B, okay? And this person A done a lot of sins against person B, okay? So this, this person done a lot of thing against this person, okay? So what does he do? Before he started with the criticism, what happened? They were both right. I was right, this is me, and this is my wife. We're both right, okay? Good, wonderful. Now, I did something wrong. So I know that I'm wrong, is that correct? You, when you do something wrong, you know that you're wrong. You don't need a book of uh, laws or you don't need to be religious or you don't need the, the Bible to tell you that, yes? Yes, you know that. You just know. Even if you're a baby, you know. Now, when a person cannot feel wrong. A person always wants to be right, especially the more he's making bad things, the more he wants to be right. How do you, how do you know when a person have a lot of sins, he wants to be right. It's very, very, very important for him to be right. So when a person is wrong, and but he wants to be right, he will criticize other people. And then if I criticize my wife enough, it makes me right and her wrong. So it makes my sin not such a big thing. You understand? So let's say, let's say I stole hundred dollars, okay, from a, a client. This is a client, okay, and I stole hundred dollars from him. I cheated him on something. He double paid me and I didn't tell him, okay. So we started in a good relationship and he double paid me and I didn't tell him, yes. So what, what's happened now? I feel wrong. I know, I'm, I, know I did something wrong. So, uh, but I don't want to feel wrong. So I will say, well, you know, he was late in payment. He never was late in payment. But I say, I would invent things that even never happened. He was late in payment and he's not talking nice to me and he's not appreciating it. And I gave him more than I promised. So it's okay that I stole the hundred dollars. So I'm not wrong. Do you understand that? So criticism, criticism is an indication. Every time a person criticized, never mind about what, if you open your mouth to criticize someone else, look what he did to me. But she did it first. Da, 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 da. The moment you open your mouth, you're actually admitting, look, guys, I want to tell you something, but don't tell anyone. You tell to everyone, I want to tell you something. I've done all of those bad things. But please don't tell anyone. Yes, does it make sense to you? This is why you don't use your full potential. Because when you criticize, when you criticize your attention, your attention, if this is you, this is you, when you start to criticize, 
you stop creating and you find fault. So you can either criticize or create. You cannot do both. Self-criticism is the same problem. When a person fails to criticize others, he starts to criticize himself. Self-criticism happens only as a deterioration on criticizing others. When, you, when a person fails to criticize others when he didn't help, he still knows that he is wrong, he will start criticizing himself. Still, doesn't help. It's the same thing. Wow. Yes. When a person fails to criticize other people, he will start criticizing himself. If you look at any area in your life that, um, when you look at any area in your life that you find yourself wrong, it's an area, including I'm not enough, including any, anything other than creation anything other than beautiful and unbelievable, the most unbelievable, amazing God, anything less than God about yourself is criticism. It is because, so for example, did you, did you notice that someone hit the, the door or someone hit something and say, oh, I'm so stupid because he failed to criticize the physical universe. So he started to say, oh, I'm so stupid. But at the beginning you say, I hate that door. And when the door don't move, you, when you hit it again, the door didn't move and you hit it again. You say, oh, I'm so stupid. I hit this door every time. Did you notice that? Kapil, it's not about you should never. Once you understand it, you simply won't. Yes, it is unbelievably wow. Look, this is really fascinating. It's really fascinating. So what is criticism? Let's let's look at a little bit of what is criticism. Yes, very well, I agree. What is criticism? Let's see what the, first of all, what the dictionary say, and then we'll see what it actually means. So criticism mean express disapproval of somebody or something. To express disapproval or of or disaffection with somebody or something. This is what the dictionary says. What it actually means. Criticism means act of criticizing. Okay, fine, disapproval, we saw that, yes? Criticism is the manifestation of law affinity. Criticism is the manifestation of law affinity. It's an effort to get away from. When you try to go away from something, you will criticize. For self, others, for everyone. So when you criticize, you get law affinity. Okay, so let's say this is you. This is you, okay? And you want to be successful, yes? And you start to criticize, you start to criticize the way your partner work with you, the way the customer work, the way the market is, you criticize, you find fault. This is not right, this is not right, this is not right. What you actually do, what you do is like that. You say, look, I don't like success, but I cannot say I don't like success. So I will criticize and by that I will get away from success. So every time you criticize, you get away from success because you reduce, the, it's a manifestation of reduce your affinity. You decided, you decided, I'm not going to be successful because I'm not worth it because I've done so many bad things. So I'm not worthy to be successful because I'm dangerous. Look how dangerous I am. I've done all of those big, bad things. So what you say, I know I need to get away. So let me criticize, let me criticize, let me find fault with this so I will get away more and more and more. Thank you. Yes. This is really fascinating. It is, it is a manifestation of law affinity. And law affinity is a manifestation of criticism. So if you criticize, if you find fault, 
Forget about success. You cannot be successful and criticize at the same time. Because when you criticize, you say the physical universe is, is senior. You, you assign cause, criticism, you assign cause to something. You say, he is an asshole. You assign cause to him. He's winner and you are a loser. You stop creating. Yes, yes, Oscar. It's, it's, this is fascinating because you take yourself away actively and you take yourself away, you, like you run away from something and you say, but I'm not, sh I don't understand why I'm getting so far from it. And you run the other direction. You know you run the other direction and you say, I don't know why I'm getting away from it. This is how insane it is. Wow. Yes, yes, this is really fascinating. This is unbelievable. Now, it is an effort to reduce affinity. It is an effort to reduce affinity. When you criticize, you try to reduce the affinity. So you try to increase the distance. Why you try to increase the distance? Because you are good. Look, the reason you try to, to increase the distance is because you know that you are good. That's what, number one, you know you are good. Number two, you also know you caused bad. So because you are good, the inevitable conclusion is I must move away to prevent bad. So you will see that every person that consider that he must be away, he thinks that he create bad. So if person A find fault with person B and say, look, person B is wrong, is wrong, is wrong, is wrong, is wrong. Situation B is wrong, is wrong, is wrong, is wrong. What he says, actually, I have an excuse to get away. And the truth is that he wants to get away to protect person B. He wants to protect person B from his viciousness. You get that? So true. So you can say that the only problem that you have is that you are so good. <laughs> Kate, it's everyone. It is in the mind, yes. This is fascinating, yes. Every yes. Your only problem, the only problem is that you're so good. You're so amazing. You're so unbelievable. And you don't want to cause damage. So you're willing to lose. You're willing to be poor. You're willing to be useless. You're willing to be beaten. And you use criticism as a way to justify to yourself that why it is okay for you to move away. Good, Kate. Good. This is amazing. Thank you, Curtis. But we still cause more bad doing uh, moving away. Of course, because when you move away, you take you take away life. Because now you become even more blind because you're away. You become even more blind because you committed more, as I told you. It's you're doing sins only against yourself or mainly against yourself. So now you're committing more sins against yourself. You become more blind. You become more critical, more critical. And you'll see that when someone is really, really, really critical, when someone has very short fuse, he committed a lot of sins, many. How many sins you have? Count the number of time you lose it. You want to know how many sins you have? Don't look. Don't look. Just count how many times you get upset, afraid, uh, anything, any mis-emotion. I did this in the 2007 when everyone around me was doing bad and I swore to myself that I would not do the underhanded uh, stuff that the people around me 
were doing bad business and even though I did not participate, I lost it all. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, Oscar, you you're good. That that's the problem. And you thought that you are bad because people think if I lost, it means I'm bad. No, 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 no. Fascinating. When you reduce affinity, you create space and lose control, and as a result, you have confusion. So we understood now that you criticize, you reduce affinity, you reduce affinity now, you create space. The further you are from the steering wheel, the less control you have over the steering wheel. You agree with that? So when you have, you lose, when you, what happened, you lose control, what you get is a confusion. You get confusion. Disaster, yes. And confusion is defined as any situation that contains low enough affinity so as to prevent an immediate handling. It's any situation that contains low enough affinity so as to prevent an immediate handling because you can handle any situation. There is no situation that cannot be handled. But when the affinity is too low, which means you don't inject affinity into it, you actually have a problem. So if you start to love, if you start to admire, if you, the opposite of criticism is admiration. If you start to admire the situations, if you start to admire the, the no money, if you start to admire whoever around you, if you start to, if you don't, if you are not successful, you're simply not admiring enough. You're criticizing, criticizing too much. There is nothing like doing nothing. You either criticize or you admire. You don't do nothing. Do nothing is criticized. Does it make sense? Wow. Very much. Yes. Good. Good, Nomi. Good, Eva. You are excellent. So shall good, good. So the next thing we will do in the From Zero to Hero Pioneer is to learn how to use affinity, the long arm of the spirit. You will learn that your army, like a country has an army, your long arm is the affinity. Your army is better than any army in history because it's instead of use of a shooting bullet, it shoots admiration and it's done by affinity. You shoot admiration by using affinity. Affinity, affinity, affinity is something that you can use at, at, at will. You just pour it onto something and the thing becomes yours. Um, affinity is the ahada. In Hebrew, ahada. Someone punch you, you use affinity. You lost money, you use affinity. Someone steal for you from you, you use affinity. Exactly. Now, what is the com what is the common denominator to all the criticizing? Why people criticize? Criticize tend to physical violence to be right. Yes, I'm so sad. I'm so bad someone should uh, beat me. No, you're not. Uh, admire and it goes away. Yes, Anita. We want to be right, feeling we have to be right and others wrong. Easier to destroy than to create because they have committed sins to avoid taking responsibility. So what is the common denominator to all criticism? This is very fascinating. The common denominator to all criticism is an effort to correct past behavior or situation and it never works. What you do with criticism, you criticize something that happened already. Do you, do you agree with that? Yes, you, you agree. Good. 
Now, what happened cannot be unhappened. Yeah, this one, yes. What happened cannot be unhappened. So it's always fail because when you criticize, you try to fix something that happened before. You justify it, you justify it by saying you want to create a better future. But it never creates a better future because the attention goes to the past. Yes, Candice. The attention goes to the past, so it's never creating a better future. The only way to create a better future is to create a better future, not to correct a, a bad one. The only way to create a better future is to create a better future, not to correct a bad one. True, yes. Anwar, yes. This is really fascinating. It's so simple. It's in the past. Nothing will fix it. The only thing you can do is create. What is the definition of insanity? What is the definition of, of, of insanity? What is the definition of insanity? Attention stuck in the past. Exactly. Attention stuck in the past. So when you criticize, it, criticism is a manifestation of insanity. Because when you criticize, you're stuck in the past. Do you see that? Do you, do you understand? Uh, Oscar, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is tenacity. It's not insanity. It's tenacity. So simple, so powerful. Yes. This is really fascinating. Look, you criticize only past behaviors. When you criticize, your attention is in the past. You're totally stuck in the past when you, you, you criticize. You're insane and you want to create something sane. How can, how can it be? Just look at that. Just look. Just It's so simple. I agree. It's fascinating. Good, Oscar. Does it make sense to you? Are you all with me? Yes. Good. Very good. An effort to correct the past is always insane. Rose, good. Admiration is the key, you're right, Sushel, yes. Lona, yes. An effort to correct the past is always insane. How would you define the word past? Yeah, wow. Anthony, yes. An effort to correct the past is always insane. So how do you define the word past already happened, yes. What's over, previous time, not now, yes. Anything uh, you cannot correct, James, yes. Some of all the limitation, Kurt, is very true. What has already occurred and has been uh, ingrained in you, yes. Past, unchangeable, yes. All facts all really, uh, already happened, yes. What went before, yesterday. Any fixed idea, that's correct, Susan. Dead and gone. Um, false data, anything before now. Excellent. The past, the past, waste of time, yes, doesn't exist exactly. The past is the sum of all your limitations. I want you to look at that. The past is the sum of all your limitations because the past tells you what's possible and what's impossible, yes? So it's defined limitation. Limitation is basically what's possible and impossible, yes? It's really fascinating. So if the past, if you agree, if you agree that the past is the sum of all your limitation, anyone don't agree with this definition? Do you want more explanation? Anyone not agreeing with this? Wasn't there some good in there? What's the good? Tell me what's the good. It's gone. It's defining limitation. Look, look, look at the past. Look at the past. 
Look at the past. Let, let me let me show you the past. Okay, this is the past. Okay, I'm going to show you the past. This is this is the beginning, and it goes forward. Yes. Do you agree that at the beginning there was only two particles? And then there was four particles and so on. Yes, agreed. Now, do you agree that the, that the physical universe has one law that is unbreakable, that for every action, there is a prior action? Everyone agree with that? Never breakable, for every, nothing come from nothing, yes? Good. So do you agree that the more particles we have, the more limitations we have? So you can say that the, the, your, the time track is actually a time track of limitation. You start with endless possibilities. This is here. You just create. And as you go along, you become with less and less and less possibilities. What defines those possibilities is the past. You try to jump, you fail. Oh, I should not jump from this height. You you drove 100 kilometers, you felt that the car is almost turning over. Okay, not more than 100 kilometers with that car. The, the past is the sum of all your limitations. Agree? Yes, the accumulate of a time tracks, yes. I know it's different than what people think. But I can tell you one thing, your only enemy is your past. Experience is your enemy. Experience is your enemy. A person with a lot of experience is a person with a lot of limitations. That's why there is such thing that called um, beginner's luck. Why the, uh, Nomi ask why the lines cannot be uh, equal, be, uh, parallel? Because you start with two, then there's four, then there's six, and 36, and 100, and there's more and more particles, so there's more and more limitations. Do you understand that? If there's two rules, there's so much limitation. If there's four rules, there's so much limitation. If there's 50 rules, there's more limitation, yes? So every particle is more limitations. Nomi, do you see that? Yes, good, excellent. So that's why it's not parallel. Without the past, there are only possibilities and no limitations. So the more you rely on the past, the less of you there is. The more you rely on the past, the less of you there is, the more you have the physical universe. Uh, I just got on the PC. Yes, hi, Alexandra and, Pe and uh, Pedro. So I was clearing my, uh, that, that uh, got uh, Blackberry stands. You were talking about admiration. I decided I would admire the stand and that I could win and or lose. I decided this is, uh, as I put it in the water with the detergent. But before I was scrubbing it, once I did this, all I did was take it out and it was gone, not need to scrub it, just gone. That's exactly what it is, you got it. It's amazing. It's actually not amazing, it's actually wow, only because other people don't actually realize. Yes, Pedro, it's unbelievable. Cool, amazing, amazing, amazing. So what is admiration? Admiration is a particle that generated by the spirit it's, un, it's not physical particle, but it is a particle that affects the physical universe. And when you put enough admiration, the physical universe deteriorate or disappear. So it, admiration is a material, not, but not physical material, that undo material things. It is almost automatic to invalidate, I know. It is almost automatic to invalidate, I know. This is amazing. Wow. Look, 
if the past is the sum of all your limitation, without the past, there only be possibilities. Yes, you understand. So when you have limitation, what do you know? You rely on your past. What you need to do is to invent ideas, no, without any connection to the physical universe. Just invent ideas, invent ideas, invent ideas, invent ideas, invent ideas, and you will see. You will see. All your limitation will go away. You will gain you back. But, but, don't forget, don't do it and go and check. It will just appear. When Pedro did what he did, he didn't, he just decided he didn't check and all of a sudden he noticed. He didn't check, he noticed. That's different, you understand? This is really fascinating. So the next thing we will do in the Z from zero to hero partner is to learn and drill creation without prior cause, no reliance on the past. Okay. A person that is in good shape does not regret his past. A person that is in good shape does not regret his past. He will not try to write the past, but create future that will make the past what it is irrelevant. You, of course, yes, Pedro, you validated the improvement for sure. Good Nomi. You don't learn from the past. You don't learn from the past. You become, you actually unlearn from the past. Look, learning is a process of deleting things, not adding things. So past is something that you added. So obviously you don't learn from the past. You get limitation by the past. You get educated by the past. You get jailed by the past. It's so counterintuitive. You get jailed by the past. Fixed by the past, yes. So a person that is in good shape does not regret his past. He will not try to write the past, but create future. He will not try to write the past. If I'm not trying to write the past, it's mean, I don't mind what the guy did to me. I don't mind. I'm going forward. The hell with what he did to me. Because he didn't do to me anything, it's me. So I don't try to write the past. I make the past what it is, irrelevant. It is so against the way of current thinking. You're right, Lorna. So the past is already limitation, and then we think we add on lessons learned from it, which is actually cemented, right? 100%. This is really fascinating. A person that is in good shape does not regret his past. He will not try to write the past, but create future that will make the past what it is, irrelevant. Why, why, why? Why you don't write the past? Why you don't go to write the past? Why it will be a sin to write the past? Why it can be like it's actually digging a bigger hole. It does not exist. Yes, it's past. Because your attention will be stuck on the past. Yes. Uh, current accomplishment. Yes. Uh, it wasn't wrong making it wrong. Yes, very good. Because you don't it, explain it more, Anita. Because you can you can do it. Uh, what happened has happened. Yes, every. Because if you write the past, there are no way to create new possibilities. Yes, it makes it stronger. Yes, because you validate it. Yes, 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 yes. Keep. Yes. Why? It's why you don't want to fix the past. Why it's wrong to fix the past? You can't write what doesn't exist. I want to show you something amazing. I want to show you something amazing. Okay. Have a look. Just answer the question. Okay, I want you to look at that. This is really fascinating. This is uh, the beginning and this is time. Yes, everyone with me, you know this drawing very well. Now let's say, let's say that this is a moment in time right now and you did something here. You did something here. Do you understand that when you did it, from your viewpoint, it was the most 
absolutely right you could do. It was totally right. Do you agree with that? Always, 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 always. That was the most right you could ever think about in regard to that second, yes? Everyone agree with that? Good. Now, later on, later on, this become the past. Now you are here and looking from here, you say it's wrong. As we said, criticism is only about the past. So wrong can be only in the past. Do you understand? Wrong cannot be in present time. Do you agree with that? Yes? Good. So if you try to fix that, if you try to fix that, you're going against something insane because it's not wrong and you're trying to fix something that is not wrong. Because when you did it, it was right. So what you do when you try to fix the past is you add lies. So it becomes even more solid. You add lies. Criticism of the past, any criticism is wrong. Crazy. Because when you did it, you are so good. You cannot do something wrong. At zero time, you think it's the most right. And when you go to fix it back, you actually adding lies. That's all you do. You cannot not add lies on something that is already lie, right. The reason is why it's even why you even remember it is because after you did it, you try to fix it. You make it wrong. And every time you make it wrong, you add lies. And because you add lies, it stays. What about something you did wrong in the past? You never did anything wrong. Where at the moment that you've done it, you thought it's the most correct thing at that split of a second, from your viewpoint. You stole $50. You thought at that moment that the overall balance, that it's right. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. The fact that you did it is a proof that you thought that it's right. If you go 50 trillion years back, you wouldn't find one second that you are wrong. Do we have any moral responsibility towards other people? Other people is you. Because the only thing that you can see in other people is you. If you see someone doing something totally illegal, blah, 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 you don't criticize him, you create something. Criticism will not help. Good, Ross. Wow. Now, do you, you have to understand. You have to understand. When someone doing something that is damaging to another person, he may be at fault. You can blame him until tomorrow and you can take him to jail and you can cut his both hands and legs and you burn him he back worse so you didn't really fix anything punishment do not help you know that they checked you know they checked something really fascinating there was a study that was done i don't remember by which university right now but you can check it. And there was a study, and what they did, they, do, they did the following. They, they looked at the worst punishment uh, eras in uh, history. So, you know, when people had, uh, if you steal, we cut your hand. Like, this is like, if you steal an apple, you lost your hand, yes? Uh, if you lie, we burn you on the stack, etc., etc. Like, really vicious, vicious, like really, really bad. Okay, so this is period number A, okay? And they looked then and period number b and period number b is let's say today that if you steal you get the slip on the wrist like you say oh that's not good and after 30 times that you steal maybe they tell you well that's not good yes this is the, the other extreme and do you know that percentage wise in relationship to the society the same per the percentage of uh, criminals here is bigger than here which means the size of the punishment do not actually improve anything.
Do you understand that? The size of the punishment fix nothing. Nothing. They don't, the size of the punishment fix nothing. The only way to actually improve the society is actually understand that the person is actually good. He needs help to see that he's good. You want to rehabilitate a person? Find how good he is. Let him see how good he is. He will fix himself. You can incarcerate him. You can put him in jail only to protect other people, only for as long as you show him how amazing he is. Brutal treatment makes no difference. Has someone ever paid you for something? Have you ever taken legal measure against them? If, if someone has uh, not paid me, actually not. I, if I will go to a lawyer to collect, it's not legal measure because I will not put them in jail. I will not do anything like that. Hmm. Really interesting, yes? I will go to collection. I will send someone for collection, but I will not punish them. I would not want more. I will not want them to suffer. You understand? It's very big difference. So why? So why? As the truth is that when you did what you did, you did it from the viewpoint that it was the correct thing to do with the data on hand. So if you go now and regret your past, if you go now and try to make someone wrong about his past, you will just add more lies and make him less able. Now, I had an idea this uh, afternoon, and you know, you already know that the, um, the From Zero to Hero Power Hour is supposed to be a series of uh, many webinars. I think uh, it was 12, and um, that those webinars, uh, I already explained to you, I'm, I'm explaining to you in the past six weeks uh, what I will teach in them, and I give you basic information about them, and uh, they're very, very, very extremely powerful and everything. What I wanted to do is I want to make uh, the data available, available to everyone. And um, instead of having this thing be very expensive, uh, because it's very valuable, what I want to do is to do the following. I want to combine the From Zero to Hero Power NR with a series of Power NR that I call the map. For the seminar that called the map, the seminar that called the map uh, is going to happen in um, in Toronto, and uh, it's going to be four days. And um, those four days, in order to be ready for them, I need to teach about 20 hours. And this is more or less what I was planning to teach in the From Zero to Hero. And the, the data is also very parallel. I, I, you will need the same data because in both cases, it's actually basic data that will change your life. So what I wanted to do is to tell you that instead of you uh, going into from zero to hero seminar, I want you all to come to the MAP webinars. I made it at a very, very, very low price. It was supposed to be $1,900, the From Zero to Hero, as you all know. I think you all know that. And I made it into something that basically anyone can do. And what it is, it's like that. So it's going to be every Monday and every Thursday at 8 p.m. from today until the 4th. If I need more, I will add more dates. You know, I'm not counting the, I'm not selling you time, I'm selling results. It will be online, of course. And the price will be about 10% of what the original price was supposed to do. It will be $149. But, but, this price will stay only until tomorrow. If you pay by tomorrow, $149. If it's after tomorrow, it will go up. Okay? How do you register? 
So I think this is an amazing price, amazing uh, opportunity to, to everyone. Everyone can do that. I don't know about anyone that cannot do $149 for, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven that times more or less three hours. So it's 21 hours, yes? So I'm planning to do each one of those things between two to three hours. So let's say about 20 hours, yes? 20 hours divided to 149, it's about $7 per hour. Yes, $7 per hour for this data is like insane. Uh, JJ, it's part of what uh, you need to put as an idea and make it real. Yes, because. Yes, because, just make it go right. It's part of the reason that I'm making this thing like that is because you want to confront what it takes. I'm basically giving it away, that's true. So, wonderful. So you wake up at uh, 3 o'clock, stand till 5 a.m. and go to work. Beautiful. What's the problem? Just a consideration. And if there will be one day that you couldn't make it, I'll give you the recording. Okay, so how do you register? How do you register? How do you register? You go to this... Um, ignore all of this uh, thing. This is part of the whole offer. So you got to register here, yoursecretpotential.com. And when you click that uh, link, uh, you will see that, let me show you the link, yoursecretpotential.com. This is in Hebrew. Uh, engineering your success so you will see that and you will just register here okay let me give you the link directly you don't need the whole things now if you make it to toronto you'll get this thing as we will credit you this 150 dollars from the full price okay if you come to toronto if you come to the full seminar and which you should you'll get it as a credit yes so basically, you get that thing as it's free, okay? So you've got until tomorrow, until tomorrow night to register. From tomorrow, it will be more expensive. It is very, very powerful. Tomorrow uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, this is the cutoff time, because at 8 p.m. we have the first uh, lesson. So you want to make it, it is going to be super, 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 super wow. Everything I promised you so far in the um, um, Zero to Hero will be part of the map. It's all the basics. It's all the thing that everyone needs to know in order to know what I'm actually going, in order to create their own private map. So register. That's all for today. And and last, 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 last thing, please, please, please go to Facebook and write your wins. Okay. I love you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Margaret, Rose. Thank you. Where is the link? Here is the link in the chat. Here we go. Okay. You've got the link. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be very, very powerful. Yes, Anita. I'll show you the date again. Uh, it is, uh, tu, 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 tu. let me see where, where are the dates. Uh, <laughs> dates, 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 dates. Uh, here are the dates. So these are the dates. 70, 20, 24, 27, 1st of July and 4th. Okay. Arjuna, I love you, I love you, I love you. I didn't see that you registered yet. What's going on, Arjuna? You have to be there. I feel better. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I'm looking forward to see you. Anastasia, really looking forward. Daniela, thank you. See you tomorrow, Lorna. Yes, Margaret, I love you. 
it's only the start, you know. Roz, thank you. Uh, are you sharing the link to the first maximum? Yes, this is this is the link. Uh, by, uh, by the way, Susan, uh, I've, uh, this is the registration. I send you a link uh, via email and via WhatsApp. Have a look, Susan. I've sent you that last night. Ellie, thank you. Every see you tomorrow. Yes, you. Candice, thank you for helping. Great, Anastasia. I'm, I'm dying to see you. We need to meet. Okay, good. Good, Susan. I need to see you tomorrow. Maloa, Margaret. Just thank you. Okay, ciao, everyone. Thank you. I love you. And please go to Facebook and uh, share your wins. I love you, love you, love you. Bye-bye. Tomorrow, if I see you, yes, yes.